Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Untitled Production Filmmaking. <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> Filmmaking Production Diary. I am your host, Miguel Ortega, and this is my lovely co-host, Tran Ma. Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? Uh, so yeah, so we are on week eight. Uh, we we're, so just so you guys that are tuning in for the first time, what is this? We are basically doing a vlog showing the making of a short film in Unreal Engine 5. We already did one last year. Um, we're very happy with how that turned out. And now we're on to another one. Uh, the way we've been doing it up to this point, we're working with some really talented people uh, to help us on certain uh, models that we're doing. Uh, right now, I'm working on the script. I think we're we had the first pass done. Yeah, Tran. Well, kind of. Yeah, we have t two versions. We have two finished scripts that are completely different. Three. Well, basically, so we have the first one, which is when they go to the to cave together. Yes. So we have three completely different versions of the same story, and right now we're like narrowing in on the one we think is the best one. It's been a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And then what I've been doing is I've been doing, uh, working on the characters, doing the CG stuff, while, again, Miguel is um, working on the script. I did put down the character, though, just to kind of uh, work on the script with Miguel. Um, yeah, the this sooner, week. Yeah, this week. So I didn't get as much done on the CG side. But 
the sooner the script is final, Miguel is free and he can jump in and be a 3D artist Yeah. Uh, because that will make things move a lot, a lot faster. Um, I mean, at least twice the speed, right? With yeah, the thing I'm voicing the hollow is we actually, it's actually kind of cheating because on our first episode, we had already been working on it for three months that we haven't that we hadn't documented. So it's almost as if we were starting on it now. Yeah. And we, we had the script already done. It was, uh, yeah, and we had the script already done. Yeah. So this one is going through development of the story and, um, basically everything from the very beginning. Yeah. And we're going to get into the whole script stuff once we have it, but, uh, we don't want to show the work in progress on the script at all until we're happy with it because we are really insecure about that stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I so. think it's just good just to say it straight out, yeah. you know. Um, so, you writing, know. Yeah, writing is uh, something that we're, we're not as confident in, even though it's our favorite part of the creative process. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Like when I was working with on the script with Miguel, it's hard um, because it's not some muscle I've been exercising for as long as 3D. So, um, but it, it it's it's very very much just being creative. Um, and then for like the CG stuff, I don't mind showing stuff that bad, like, oh, I, I screwed it up. It's fine. Because yeah. you're just doing it for so long, you just feel comfortable making a mess <laughs> yeah. on a live stream or something. Um, but not, I don't feel that way with writing. So, yeah. Um, But yeah, anyway, so one of the things Tran was working on this week that I thought was really cool Two things uh, she's working on. Well, the kind of like the shoe, shoes and gloves. Yes. So um, I just making the shoes, making the gloves, and I'm, I'm almost done um, with that. Uh, and then it would be just doing the final topology for the body, and then the character is done. Um, <coughs> do you want to show what you have so far as a whole? Yes. So there's a couple of things like um, Miguel thought it was an interesting topic. So I'll show you what the final shoe looks like. It looks something like this. I mean, maybe nice it, shoes. Maybe it would look a little bit nicer if I didn't have such a a mat. There we are. Hold on. Hey, you can see all the <coughs> the nice wrinkles and stuff. Yeah. So this shoe was made in marbles. And then what I did is I retopoed it. Um, for parts of the topology, I had to do it by hand. And then for some of it, um, it was just auto retopology. And I use uh, Quad Remesh, which is this plugin here. Um, it's a pretty good plugin. Um, sometimes I use ZBrush rem Remesher. And sometimes I use this one. There's not really any reason why I choose one or the other. I actually usually just try both and then pick the one that looks better. Um, and it's usually just 50, 50 between which one gets a better result now. Um, oh yeah. So this is pretty, this is where I was going to get on. I never seen a shoe made in marvelous for a nice job. That's so, why I thought she should show this. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things that makes it work is I'm not, I mean, I think you can make a firmer shoe, but I wasn't trying to make like, you know, those like, um, Nike shoes. I don't know much about shoes. Well, show the whole character, first of all. Do you have everything there? No, he's just naked. Okay, you don't have the clothes there? No. Okay. I, I don't have all of it assembled uh, yet. So we'll, we'll show that part. Um, I, one of the things that makes this a good candidate to make as a shoe in Marvelous is the fact that, hold on, uh, it's, it's a cloth type shoe, right? So if I was trying to do like, you know, let's pull up like, it's probably, it might be possible to do it too. I've never tried to make um, these type of shoes really, like these tennis shoes. Um, one of the things that would be tricky is trying just to make this sole that's like really streamlined inside something like Marvelous. Um, but you could probably bring in, make the sole and then bring it in and, and make this part. Um, but this, this really sleek, hard shape is hard to control. So with the shoe that I was trying to go for, it was more something like this. And what I did is I got some of these, um, I look for sewing patterns here. 
So here's one that's like very much like cloth. Uh, I wasn't going for that look. And then here's another one. Um, and I didn't copy these. They just kind of gave me an idea of how, how I could go about it. Um, I actually did try to just use that pattern, but it looked really weird. So what I ended up doing was just referencing something like this and just, just making it um, and sort of looking at these pieces as a base. Now, one of the tricks here is when you make a shoe, and let's say we don't plan to um, sim it. I don't think it, it would sim pretty well in Marvelous. It'd probably crash and do all kinds of mess up stuff. Um, but we could have it rigged, so it could be skin. Um, the trick is to not actually go life size. Is that you have to, you actually have to make it larger. So uh, I kind of forgot that, and I just started making the shoe. And this character is about um, the size of like a tall kid, or like a you know like a short person in real life. And if you go too small, there's all kinds of issues. Like uh, it can't just it can't really do the details. Like if I sim this here, um, you can see these real red lines right here. This is actually the stitch. So the stitch is showing me these really weird gaps, right? And then you could see here, like, it's like really unstable, right? So it's, it's really hard to make something, well, it's going nuts. Uh, it's really hard to make something when it's really small. Um, and scale in Marvelous is a huge deal. So if you ever make anything too large in Marvelous, um, it, the sim will be incredibly slow. If you make anything too, too small, you get errors like this, like this piping is flipping inside out. And then this here is super unstable. Um, and I have the particle distance really low, which is set to five, right? And you can see it really doesn't have that much geometry. And if you start setting the particle distance lower than five, it really doesn't like it. Um, it just doesn't like working past that number. So if I come here and I say I hit three, um, it's still really not dense enough. And I kind of moved it by accident. So what I do, instead of doing something like this, even though I made this mistake, is I will just usually grab this guy and scale him up um, a nice round number. Let's say like five or four. And this is still an okay size, right? So let me just duplicate it. Okay, let me just pull up the pen. And again, it has to do with sizing. So you can't make it something too large or too small. So I know here, it's happy doing clothing at this size, right? That's like the best result that you're gonna get. And you can see the shoe being this size is a problem. So if I scale him up um, this many times, like five times, the clothing size is about the right size for it, right? And then it's going to do a lot better. So I'll show you the final version. And I'll, I'll so kind of... this is a new scene that you scaled the model up. Yeah. Well, I had to rescale the shoe and everything, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, you don't want to see me do that. Scaling down is really easy and marvelous. Um, let's say you have something that's very large, and you're, it could be anything. It could be a jacket. It could be shoes. Um, and you want to fit it onto something smaller. It's very easy. Um, going backwards where you're trying to scale up, it, it's completely super unstable. That's just how the program works, right? So here, if you look at this one, let's go back here. You can see how much better this one looks. It has more wrinkles. Um, the material doesn't really, it's hard, kind of hard to see because it's very flat in this program, uh, but I can tell it's much better. Okay, and this is, again, the character being scaled up four or five times, forget what, what I used um, exactly. Now, the other thing I did was I did the same thing for the glove. And I can do one of these, I don't know, Maybe the shoe is more interesting than the glove. But I'll show the glove and then I'll backtrack. 
And then here's a glove. <laughs> I think it's a, it's really funny looking. Yeah, don't rotate so much, because. Yeah, uh, this is based on this reference. Let me find <laughs> um, on this one. So you know, our character's got some some kind of spunk to him. Um, now gloves is the same same idea. Now what would happen if I did try to put a glove? on him when he's really small. Let's see, let's go back to this one. It's really almost impossible to put gloves. It might be possible because the fingers are fatter. Um, let's do this. I'll just do a new scene. Let's delete this. Let's add this lady. And this is why gloves and shoes are really difficult. So if I make a piece of cloth, and let's say I want to try to submit on this, let's just pin this. And let's have it over the fingers. So I want to see, show you what it looks like when it interacts at this size. Um, well, it's not doing it so much. Oh, there you, there you go. Uh, it, this happens really easy. As you can see, the fingers just punch right through it. And this is why making gloves is really hard at, at life size. And again, the same, the same reason why making shoes is really difficult. And this is why I told you that I, th I thought you should show this today because Every time I see Noman students doing gloves, they don't do them in marvelous because they say they, they, they can't. can't do it. Yeah. And I think once you once I explain it, you explain it, then you realize oh, you just have to scale it up. Yeah. So there's all kinds of problems that it has. It's um, it's just too small, right? And this is what I mean. Like, you can't make some. You don't want to make clothing that's too small in this program, or um, too large. Right, you'll get different problems when it's too large. You get different problems when it's too small. This is the problem that happens when it's too small. Um, you can also see like the simulation is weird. Like you see how it's kind of sticking. Yeah. Right. It's it's unbearable. So it's really difficult for anyone to work like this. Um, my plan is not to use any kind of cloth simulation. So it's not a big deal if I make the character four or five times larger. Because it's just going to be weighted. Yeah, it's just going to be rigged and skinned. Um, all I want is to be able to make something nice. So I think shoe might be more interesting. Um, and I'm just going to delete this and start from scratch. So one of the things I did first um, is make sure there's air <laughs> because I want to make the sole. So the sole, uh, everything was made in Marvelous. And let's go over here to fabric, let's just close this window. Now, um, as far as the shape of the shoe, the sole, I wanted to make it based on the actual foot. So if I were to do something where I go, oh, I'll, I'll just make something like this, right? And then that's somehow gonna work, it's, it's not. It's a completely different shape. Um, and I don't wanna just kind of figure it out randomly. So what you can do is something like this, where you use um, the line tool. Um, the line tool has a couple options, right? Um, it's basically broken into two parts. It's one for a 3D pattern. So you can draw lines on clothing and one um, that you can do on top of an avatar. So this is an avatar. And then however I draw this, I can create a pattern off of this. And it doesn't care about the points lining up from the left to the right side. No, it doesn't care. It's all triangulated anyway. Yeah. There's no, like, you don't think about topology at all or, like, the basic concepts of, of modeling at any point. It's just how many points I need. Like, would the students just count? They don't think about, topo <laughs> about topology. So this program, you don't worry about that until the end. Now, once I draw this around, um, if I mess up anything, I can go to the edit and then I can move it 
right? The tool has definitely improved a lot over time. Um, I remember trying to use this years ago when it first came out and uh, it was really hard to draw on top of it. Now it's like, it's pretty good. Now, if I want to generate a pattern, I go into the flatten option. Uh, this part is still tricky. Just trying to highlight it. Okay, and then click on it. That takes a little bit of back and forth. Um, usually that takes me a few moments. That, that one's a little bit uh, clunky. But once I click on it, it turns uh, yellow. And then I press enter. And you can see there's actually command on my mouse. So you get instructions for this. And then now I have um, a pattern. Now the thing is, um, I don't like the, this having points like this and being um, faceted. So what I do want to do is smooth out the shape. Um, and to do that, what I usually use is something, this is different. This is like a epic pen tool where you can just draw on the screen like this, right? So it has nothing to do with Marvelous. No, it has nothing to do with Marvelous. Uh, I use it all the time to help me. So I use it for teaching if I, um, well, I also tutor. So if I tutor, this is great because the students can take screenshots and take notes. Um, but I use it for myself. So I'm not going to draw. I'm not going to trace this very well because my hand's not that steady. So what I do is maybe let's use pink because that's really bright. I'm just going to highlight the points. If I try to trace it, it just is like really scratchy. Um, so I'm just going to do points. And maybe the points should be a little bit larger. That way I can just kind of dab them. That's fine. I can see these. So again, this is super handy. I use it so much to help me when I'm working. Um, and it's free. I should probably get like the, the full version though. Let's erase this one. OK. So now that I have that, uh, I'm going to determine the basic points I want to keep. And I'm going to delete most of them. So here, um, if I go to Edit Pattern, I can select these points, hit Delete, hit Delete here. Uh, I probably want to keep this here. Um, this one has kind of a curve. I think I'll get rid of that. Okay, so now I've reduced this to a very polygonal shape. And I usually use Edit Curvature. You can use Edit, edit Curve Point. There are two different tools that give you curves. I like Curvature because that gives me Bezier handles. You can see that's not quite fitting, but I can adjust that. That doesn't fit either, but I could also adjust that. OK, so now that I have that, uh, once I have Edit Curve, and I go back to the Edit Pattern, you can see I have these handles here. Um, this is why I like to use that option, because I can smooth this out with these little handles. And I think here, I'm just going to smooth out that point. OK, now I have a really nice, um, if I hide this, I can judge and go, OK, this is very clean. Um, and this is how I want my soul to be shaped instead of those facets. I'm kind of bothered by this point, but I, I won't noodle it. I'll also save in case I crash. Um, Marvelous files are super tiny. So you should save a lot. So the model is just being referenced and it's not actually. No, it's actually in there. It's in there. Um, but like their, the files just never get that large. Like if I look at my, I don't know why, but if I look at my file size for anything finished, like my glove is like five megabytes, right? And then my final shoe size is like six for a file. You know, look at my Maya files or any or any other files, uh, particularly substance files. They're really massive. How about Unreal files? Oh, psh, yeah, those are like ridiculous. Okay, so now I have something like that. Now here, I um, we do have normals on this, and I want to change the direction. Um, but first, I also want to have a second piece right on top. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this. 
which is just control C and control V. So if I do control C and V and I paste it over here, it's gonna show up over here. Um, the problem with this is now I'll have to come in and try to align it, which is a pain in the butt. So what I do instead, and what a lot of people do, is I'll just paste it right on top of itself, right? And click on it and just move it down. Uh, it also, I notice it's not completely flat. So you can see it's kind of raised. So I'm gonna delete that. And what I'm gonna do here is flatten this out by just um, resetting 2D arrangement. And so now it takes a few more steps, but that's okay. I do wish you can just um, type it. Yeah, snap it or whatever. But so there's no no way to to set it to rotate ninety degrees. Uh, I don't think so. It never existed before. It might be possible that it does now. I just don't realize it because it's something that has changed in update, and I'm not aware of. But I don't think it does. And then from here. Um, I do want this to be larger. I should be able to scale this up without it freaking out because it's still flat right now. And I want this to exceed um, the size of the foot a little bit. You know, this part you don't really want to rush. I know it doesn't look super exciting. Um, it's long enough, it's not quite wide enough. And maybe I want to adjust the shape. And you really don't want to cut the corners here. Just get it right, because you're going to grow your shoe on top of this. <laughs> OK. And I want this border um, to be even. You can, like, let's say you don't get it quite perfect. What do you mean by, by you want it to be even? Um, I want this thickness to be even all around, around the foot. Do you see what I mean? No. Like the distance. I see. So this is uneven. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fat. And so that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, because they're two, they're two separate. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to grow. I'm going to, um, if you look at this. You see how there's like the stitch? Yeah, it's in the in, inside. And you can see how that comes out. I want to do something like that. Um, I, it's doing this here. This looks much more natural. What did they used to use back in the days for the soles? What, what was that? I have no idea. Because um, I have no understanding of shoe history. <laughs> so, OK, so this is pretty good. It might be a little large. Just go down a little bit. and. And I could fix this when I retopo, but this is decent and it's flat. I'm going to copy it and paste it. Make sure it's lined up. And then tap on it, create my second piece. And then what I want to do here is make sure my normal is correct. So this is correct. Um, this piece here, this one's not. And I can move this over now. So what I'll do is right click and flip the normals, which will flip the shape and flip the normals in the 3D view. Let's move this out of the way. Now, I don't want this to really move around. Um, I did sim this at the end so that it could look more natural. But while I'm working, um, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to freeze these. Now that it's frozen, if I sim, um, they just act like, you know, as if they're not simming. OK. So from here, I want to have a, a band around this. So what I'm going to do is figure out uh, what's the length. right? So I can circle this whole thing. And under my mouse, it will add numbers up. So it's 168. Um, if you click on one edge, you'll get a number under the mouse. This one here is 168. And again, I use um, notes. 
So I'll write it down here. It's 168 point. Um, I don't, I'm just going to do 169. 168.83, but I think it's okay if it's slightly off. And then I'll just come here, tap. Um, if you draw, you draw the shape. If you tap like this, you'll get a window popping up. And this will, I'll just do it lengthwise. One V one sixty nine, and maybe I could adjust the width. It might be four centimeters. I'll figure it out in a second. Where do you think the oldest shoes ever found were found in? I don't know. Where do you think? In Oregon. In Oregon? Yeah, isn't that weird? That's the oldest shoe. I mean, they say that they're all they've all they're all made out of perishable materials. So uh, that's probably not the first place, obviously, but uh, the oldest ones that were found. In or Oregon. That's yeah, cool. That's cool. Okay, so from here I can see the measurement. This is a little bit too um, thick, so I can scale it down. And you know, for me, this kind of stuff is um, fun. So maybe like three centimeters. Um, this is annoying. It's point uh, three nine. Ah, that's fine. I don't have to get my measurements perfect. I say that, but I'm still fiddling with it. It's one thing I would say is hard is um, trying to snap in this program is still weird. Okay. Now that I have that, I want to make sure um, my sewing point makes sense. So I have to sew it from the top. Um, and I want the start point to be the same on both patterns. So for example, um, if I go from this edge to here, meeting this edge to this edge. Let's draw that again. They both start in the same place, which is say here. Um, you'll make a big mess if I go from the bottom edge here and let's say I start it here, right? It'll just be twisted. Um, so don't do that because you'll get really bad results. And for me, I'm just gonna pick the back and pick this point here because that makes the most sense. So I can find it again. And then what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to understand um, the orientation. So I'm tapping and I get this blue dot and it shows up over here. So now I have an idea of where that's at. And I'm gonna tap here and tap here so that determines the direction. And I'll just do a free sew. So let's tap here. Sew that around. And let's just let it sim. Okay, now I have lambskin on this, which as a preset, I think that's fine. Let's just pull this out because it's jiggling. And then let's sew the bottom. I remember the first time I saw someone pull fabric like that back at SIGGRAPH in Vancouver. I thought it was just completely insane. Was it with Marvelous? Yeah, it was like they had a tiny little booth. Uh, it really changed the industry. It was when I was when I did the talk on the Thor on Thor. Oh, it was that far? Yeah, long ago, huh? Yeah. It, I don't know if people, how many people were actually using it back then, because we weren't using it back then. No. Okay, now let's slow this. All right, cool. Now I have my soul. And at any point, um, if I don't like this, I'm not uh, perfectly okay with it. I should fix it, but I'm just going to pretend I'm perfectly okay with it. Um, what I want to do, again, referencing this pattern, is if you look at the shoe, um, let's say I have the sole, and then we have the stitch that you can see here. I want to create the pieces and sew it, you know, and then you can see there's this extra thickness around here. 
Now, as far as how I determined the shape, I, I didn't really have a way. I just kept messing with it until it looked right. So I was just fiddling around. Um, on this part here, though, what I can do, let me make sure this is on, <clears throat> is I can create a line. And what you can do is just double click this whole thing, right click, um, offset as internal line. And then I could do something like that. And then I could see, um, I don't know why I don't see the line. I think I turned it off by accident. There we are. Where that's at. And you can see why I was being kind of fussy. So it's a little bit tight on this side. So I think I'll just remake this. So I could select it and just hit delete. Double click this again. And this time maybe instead of 2.5, let's do 2.4. Let's do that again. I'm doing the wrong command. I think this is enough. Okay, so let's just work with this. It might have some issues uh, where it's really close, like around here. <coughs> All right. Now that I have that set up, I'm just going to freehand and make shapes like this. Um, the first one is going to be this shape here. Second. <coughs> Sorry, I've been getting a little bit sick this year, but I'm almost over it. Okay, I'll make this weird shape here, um, which will actually be um, the shape here. The one thing that this doesn't have, though, um, if you look at this one, it's just like this weird, goes comes down like that. It doesn't have that thickness. So that's an extra piece I don't have a pattern for. Um, I'll make that first. And I wanna figure out how far back it goes. So I'm just gonna tap, I see a blue dot here and a, another dot here. I'm not exactly sure how long that is, but I'm just going to guess. Sometimes guessing, it just works out well. Um, I can put a more firm cloth, which is full grain. And let's just start sewing. Um, I don't worry about being too too accurate in the beginning, because then it's really, really slow. Okay, let's just sew. Let's figure out where this corner is from here. Okay. Whenever I'm doing the blue tapping, it's just to understand my orientation, to make sure my stitches are correct. So if I do this backwards like this, um, you can see I'm going to have problems. It's going to crisscross. So I always tap it to make sure. And let's just let it sim. Okay, so this is my length. Uh, I think I want it a little bit longer so that it can tuck in. So what I'll do is just extend this on each side. And now this is going to be longer than what's attached here. Um, so it's going to crunch up because now this is long. So what I can do is just adjust the seam or the sewing. Just go to edit sewing. Click on this dot and you can see here it it's very smart. There's this blue dark dot. It tells me how much longer that is. So I can slowly ease it in. 
okay, cool. And now I don't have any weird, uh, you know, things going on. The next thing I want to make sure is if this is thick enough, it might look better if it's a little bit more thick. It's a little short. Okay. I think that could work. I'm not sure what I did uh, on the other one. Let's keep it a little bit longer. Okay, so that's here. Let's save. Okay, so now I want to make a shape somewhat similar to this. It won't be exactly that because the shape of the foot on this character is just so different. Um, but I'll have the idea. I'll draw half of that shape. And I will usually do it as a uh, few points as possible. Okay. And then I'll do the edit curvature. Uh, and I'll curve these in a second. What I want to do is mirror the other side. So it could be a separate pattern that you're cloning, or you can select an edge and unfold with symmetric editing. Uh, what that will do is uh, mirror the other side. So anything I do on this side will mirror, mirror over. That way it always looks even. Now I want to see how the shape um, even looks like it might fit. Because if I just make some kind of random shape and, and just force it to fit, it never really will fit around the uh, foot. And this is where I think... Um, I had a question just now. Do you have a specific website or source you like to use when looking for shoe patterns and clothing references? No, I actually don't. Um, I, I get asked that question all the time. I just never have found um, anything that was like really helpful. Yeah, I'm sure there are now. I haven't really searched in a long time. Um, we used to buy books on it. We have a few. I, yeah, I have a few, um, but they're very particular. They're um, Victorian. Victorian. Did they help me? They did, because when I first started doing this, I didn't understand sewing patterns at all. Um, it's kind of like UVing. You ever start first UVing, and you don't know where to cut your seams, and then over time you go, oh, okay. So it just, just takes a little bit of practice. Now here... I have this length of this edge, which is 95.97, um, which is almost 96. So what I want to do, is I'm not good at math, let's just say it's 96 divided by 2. Um, this edge should be 48. Uh, there's no point in making it completely perfect right now. I just want to be somewhat in the ballpark. The reason is I'm probably going to adjust how this shape behaves like this uh, because that's going to um, dictate how it curves around the foot. I just want it to be somewhat close. And then here, I'm going to sew it um, starting from this point and attaching over here. And it would just be free sew. And let's do that and just let this sim. Um, this one I have lambskin on. I think it bends over more. If I change this to full grain, I mean, it, it works fine, actually. Let's just leave it lamb. Because this is how what I want it to be at the end. And you can see um, I'm getting some crinkling. So I have a better idea of what the shape is going to behave like. Uh, but I can get rid of that. It's because this is just a point and the shape needs to be more curved instead of this uh, triangle. And then it should get rid of some of this crinkling. Uh, 
Let's make this area curved. They look like loafers. Yeah. I kind of wonder if I should have kept his shoe like, like this more, but it's fine. Wait, now you're going to have both. <laughs> no, the retopology is a... Um, I, like the, I like the other ones. Yeah. So I want it about this high. Let's sim this. Um, most of the crinkling is gone. Um, it's still kind, kind of there. Hey, hey. So let me adjust the shape. I want this a little bit wider. And let's curve this. Say so, hey, shoe class. Yeah, it's shoe class. Cobbler. Tran the cobbler. Okay, so this is okay. Um, let's make this a little bit nicer looking. And I submit each time, so I just make sure it's working out. And then here, I don't want this to be um, this sharp edge. Uh, we have a tool here called Smooth Curve, and I can just do something like that. And I want this to be, no, nah, let's not do that. I'll just do it manually. Let's bring, it, bring this point down. Um, you can see I really prefer the Bezier curve. It looks much nicer. It is. If you can use this one, um, when I you can see how there's all these little points. It's really weird. I have a hard time controlling it. Some people I notice, you know, I watch other people working in Marvelous because that's how you learn. Um, you know, you're never too good to learn from someone else. But a lot of people seem to like that tool, and it makes no sense to me. But it seems like the favorite. Okay. So I like this kind of looseness. I think it's okay because it will look, give me some cloth look. Um, and I don't want it to look too firm. Okay. Now I do um, want some piping. Like you see it, I don't know. I, I don't wear that many sneakers, but I had them as a kid. I remember some of my shoes had that. Uh, and I'm going to retopo it anyway. Someone just put, it's me. She's talking about me. I love points. Okay. okay, yeah. It's totally, totally fine. Just not my thing. Um, I'm going to create a pipe. So there's a piping tool here. And I find it really clunky to use, but, you know, you basically click on one point. And this is why it's clunky. Um, it's just snapping over. So, Seeing your process is so helpful, Tran. Thank you for continuing to share your techniques. Oh, thank you. Um, so you can see I can't get the piping all the way to the end of the edge. You see it's just bouncing over. So I'm just going to uh, try to stop it before it does that and just let it finish here. And then what I'll do is go to Edit Piping because there's always an edit tool inside of Marvelous, and then just pull it over. Um, and there is a pipe in here, but it's really little. And it does not work. This pipe did not work well when I was doing a life-size scale. Um, I can click on this here and change the width. So let's do one centimeter. And now I have that pipe. which is cool. People who don't wear sneakers should be banned. Well, I'm a sandals person. Now you have those, Tran buys sneakers every time she goes to Disney because she forgets to wear her sneakers. Yeah, I show up in so <laughs> sandals. Tran has like, she only has Mickey Mouse shoes. Yes, um, and yeah. And she only buys them when she goes to Disney because she forgets to bring the last pair she bought at Disney. 
Um, yeah, I should wear more sneakers because they're better for your feet. Okay, so now I have this. I want to create this piece. So obviously the shoe is not quite the same. Um, these are, I guess, are like high tops and these are lower, but you can see the idea. I want to create the equivalent to this shape hugging around it. And um, in theory, it's something like this, but it's probably not going to be this shape, exact shape at all. Uh, but that gives me, it, it definitely was not that shape at all. Uh, but it kind of gives me an idea of how it should sort of look. This one, I, um, I freed hand a lot because uh, it looked really weird for a while. So I'll just do, I don't even remember what I, I ended up with. Uh, let's do that again. I want this one to be straight. The snapping is, um, is always a pain for me. And it doesn't ever really snap perfectly. Okay, so this is really huge. And this, again, is only half. And this one I'm probably going to adjust the most. Uh, it's probably too long. And I want to make it more firm. So I'll put it as full grain leather. Put it back here. It, it might not be too long. It might be the right size. Um, it's not very fancy. It doesn't have curves, but that's okay because it's, you know, I'm just trying to block it out. Now, when it wraps around, when I sew it, it could snap back, um, making all these kind of crunch in and look super messed up. So what I'll do is I'll just freeze everything. Um, not everything. I don't need to freeze the whole thing. Let's just freeze these guys. And I'll just start sewing. And then figure out the orientation. So here's my point here. We'll start to sew it around here. Okay, that's not so bad. I do think you get a little bit better at guessing your sizes and, and stuff um, the more you do it. Okay, so now I have this wrapping around. Um, you can see it's like not bending over at all. And I'm not sure if it's needs to be longer. Um, meaning longer this way, but it definitely needs to be a lot higher. Uh, it's also really hard to deal with it when it's like this, so I'll make it lambskin, and, and then it collapses. But I'll need to do a couple things. Um, the idea is the shoelace is going to hold this over, but I'll just pin it because I, I can't really tell what it's doing. It's really floppy over here, so I have to fix that. But you could probably see why I say this is uh, the shape that gets adjusted the most. Um, the shortcut for one pin is just hold W and click on that. That is not like, um, I don't know how that shortcut came to be, but it was, there's not like a tool doing exactly that. Okay, so I have too much crap back here. And I don't have enough coming forward. So first I want to fix this shape. What did I do? <laughs> oh, 
How did I shave this off? Did I keep it as one shape? I might have cut it back in half. Um, I assume that's what I did. So I need to actually just split this. So I just cut this apart. Now they're two shapes, but they're still mirrored. You can see this line. Um, the reason why I did that is because I need the shape to do this. And that's the hill shape uh, because I have all this air. So I need to shave off um, stuff. I need to make sure this is sewn because I think they are not. Okay, so that helps me get rid of the gap. I also lost my pins uh, because when I cut them apart, these disappeared. Okay. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Um, I also sewed it on the wrong edge. Not, I sewed it on the outside. Let me just save. So to fix that, you just have to delete it. Okay. And let's just re-sew it. Okay, so it's not even. I can move these and do that. There we are, that makes more sense. Um, and it's doing this because this is frozen. Well, it Stop doing this. It might. Shit, it's possessed. Yeah, that's that's kind of normal. Okay, it's it worked itself out. The piping did not. It freaked out. Uh, how do I fix this? I, I just I don't know. I just make some coffee. <laughs> I come back and hopefully this piping um, flips itself back inside out. I don't really have control over it, right? Um, like there's not a way for me to pull the pipe. So because it's like its own thing, you know, you could do this. This is going to make kind of a mess. I can make it larger. Usually if it's bigger, it works itself out better. Um, the mess is that it starts crashing to the stuff around it. So that seemed to work. And then I could size it small again. And then you could see it, it worked itself out. It's like little, little things. Let's just say that. Okay, so now I'm going to try to pull this back over now that it's not jiggling around. And maybe this should just be, um, there's a couple of things here um, that I want out of this shape that I think will make it look better. I think I should give it a thickness piece like this one here. Um, I don't, I didn't do that. I don't want to delete my sew. So what I can do is uh, cut it off from this main piece. And what I'm trying to do here is see how thick this is. So it's 7.62. And I can create a line here um, about 7.62. And I can just do this by offset as internal line and enter a value. Um, let's do 6.5, which is a little bit bigger. And this line is like not touching the edge, but you can right click, extend trim to pattern outline like this. And then that fixed it. And what I'll do here is I'll just cut this, cut and sew. And you can see that's mirrored over here. And let's make that firm. Now for this one, um, let's sim it. The shape is a little strange back here, but it seems to wrap around the foot fine. 
And maybe I don't want this to kind of curve forward like this. I might want this to be straighter. Uh, and you can see what I mean by snapping. Like, it snapping works however it wants to work in this program. You know, I can't snap it to this point, so it's never really straight. Fine, I don't care. It's not straight. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I have this uh, shape here. Let's pin this because it keeps slipping. Um, the advantage of giving this that thickness is the shape is now more firm. Um, right? I don't really need this to look super clothy. And it fits around, it feels more like um, a proper shoe rather than like um, a piece of cloth wrapping the foot. Everyone has a newfound respect for Nike shoes. <laughs> I think Nike shoes would be really hard to make here because they're so sleek um, from, from scratch in particular. Who is this? I'm not nearly as easy as snapping to a Slim Jim. Yeah. I like Slim Jims. Yeah, she actually does. I do. Miguel's always like, hmm. OK, so here I'm going to adjust the shape now. And what I'm trying to do is pull this over more. Um, this here is really, this point is too far back, I think. Um, and I want this to curve a bit um, nicer. So captured by Lauren. So you probably missed the beginning, but the, the model was scaled up. Really uh, large. Really large in order for this to work. Yeah, so in the beginning I talked about like why if you just go with the regular life size, it doesn't work. Yeah. It'll just start going through the model, get all crazy. Yeah, and it's super unstable. Where do they make Nike and Adidas shoes with software? I wonder. There has to be a software for that. Yeah, I'm sure that's like, because it's a huge brand that has to be like super accurate. Um, like I've worked on movies where you have like a particular brand. Like I worked on in it, it was like a watch in a movie and it was a famous brand. And you can't just like- You got it from the company. Yeah, I got it from a company. So it was like this CAD model or something and it was a pain in the ass to clean up because it had to be exactly that. Um, and it can't just be like sort of the same thing. Okay, so I think this is, the gap between this is much better. And here, I think um, this is kind of low. So I want to even that out. It also is curving up like this. And I want to get rid of that. And it was something you can do for yourself. Um, I really like the drawing tool. Even just, again, using it to think. If I wanted to do that, and you can see this is straight, I probably need to actually push that in. So I'll just do that. And then here, um, I think the back could be higher. And now it's straighter. And I think um, this is better. You know, blocking out is actually the hardest part. Um, getting it to feel more detailed is the easy and fun part. Now for this, this shape is very pointed right here. And you can see that this is round. So I'm going to use this smooth curve. This one works pretty well. Um, and it's not really that curved because the geometry is very low. So if we take a look at the wireframe. It looks like that. Um, and I can increase it by reducing particle distance. So let's set it to 10. And then now, if I sim it, you can see the shape is much more smooth. Now I've lost my pin, which is annoying to constantly lose that. Because um, I keep doing this all the time. But that's how it goes. And I'm trying to just relax the shape.
I don't know. I did hear something, so I don't know. Okay, here, let's make this shape so it's smoother. There we go. Let's pin that. Okay. You can see when I pin the inside, it's not really very good. And I will get this to be firmer in, um, in a little bit. It is marvelous designer. Okay, so let me save this. Yeah, I was just looking at the like what Nike uses. Um, yeah. So. Chat GPT has an answer for everything. Chat GPT. Yeah. Okay, so now the next step. Uh, the shoelaces would come at the end. Um, not at this point yet. Because I want to actually um, build some complexity. What I want is I like how there's a thickness here. Um, and I'm not going to get this double-sided, but I want at least one thickness. And the pipe would be hard to control. So what I'll do, and this is where it gets, um, kind of explodes a lot, just so you know. I want to come over here and do an internal line. And let's say it's a stick. Now this curve didn't really curve well. So I'll just adjust this. Someone just asked, new question, can't you just sculpt the exact shape you want and then translate that to marvelous cloth pieces to sim? Um, that has not worked out very well for me. You know, I know some people try to do that, and if they get great results, that's cool. Um, I don't. I feel like there's more control here. Um, the thing is, like, I haven't I haven't done that in a while, but what I believe is whatever you bring in is a geometry you're stuck with. So however you model it, that's it. You can't increase the poly count or reduce it or anything. So it doesn't have a lot of flexibility to um, adjust the shape. And whereas here, I'm not contained by any kind of polygon. Um, there is a wireframe, but it's, it's just whatever it is. It's just this triangular thing. Um, here, I'm going to cut this part, cut and sew. And then what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make this full grain leather, which will make that more firm. Uh, I lost my points. And you can see I keep losing my points. It's kind of annoying. Um, I don't know why these points are mirrored. So when I'm selecting them, I'm selecting both. And these guys just keep flapping open the whole time, which is again annoying. <clears throat> okay, so now I have a setup for that thickness. I want to cut across. I almost think though too, if you just like build that shoe already in Maya or ZBrush, you're like done. <laughs> so like there's no point in just taking it to Marvelous. Well, you're getting all the nice little wrinkles and stuff like that. Yeah, but I don't think the wrinkles are too hard to, to sculpt in ZBrush. The reason why I do it in here is I just don't want to model it. Yeah, but it looks more real. 
um, it, it does. And you're getting the wrinkles where they should be. Yes, because they're behaving naturally. What I'm doing here is creating this line. Kind of like using a template. It's, it's kind of the thing is, you know what the thing is? I think this seems really overwhelming because marvelous might not be something that you feel very comfortable with. But Tran is, she's explaining it, so it's going slower. But she could fly through this stuff. Yeah, it's much faster. I'm just yeah. not uh, not performing. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I have that line. What I want to do is just put little holes. Um, I'm going to use the internal ellipse. Check something. And I decided just to do three only. I can copy and paste these. Uh, and I just eyeballed the, the placement. Just went, okay, that's cool. So the gaps, they felt like they were okay. I think it depends on the person. Like, I, I definitely know, like, I have friends that are, you know, I totally respect their work. I think they're super good at what they do. They would never want to build um, a shoe in Marvelous to be like, nah. And, and that's fine. Uh, what I want to do here is set up for shoelace. So I'm just rotating these. Um, so I can create this line, but we'll do it in a second. Let me just save and cut this off. Do you bring in the animated version of the character and do create a simulated version of the clothing? For the clothing, yes. yes. For the shoes, it's just going to be rigged. Yeah, so I'm using it as like a modeling um, program. The shoes won't be simulated yeah. past this initial like wrinkling. Yeah. The regular clothing for the character is though. Yeah. Okay, so let's save this. Now I have the setup here. I'm gonna start trying to speed this up. I'm actually almost done. Here I'm gonna start um, making it a little bit prettier. Should I do the shoelaces first? Yeah, let's do the shoelaces first actually. I have it set up, I'm not gonna make it pretty yet. Um, I need the lace. Now, um, I'm gonna create a line, cutting across like this, because I'm gonna show sew the laces here. So it's gonna be a fake shoelace look. Uh, when I went to clean this up in, in Maya, um, I made it much more logical. I just need some kind of setup. And here, I don't know why this one's a little bit thicker. Just snap this here. Um, I have a, a measurement of 3.5. So I know my shoelaces are going to have a height of 3.5. And they're going to be much shorter than this, maybe. Are you going to start a sneaker company with your designs after this? <laughs> no, I definitely would not be good at that because I don't understand sneakers. That's why all my sneakers are Disneyland sneakers. I am fascinated by uh, by like sneaker heads. What are sneaker heads? People that like. Oh, no, like I'm, people. I'm, I'm in no position to criticize. Yeah, people you're a Star Wars stuff, head, right? But uh, when I see sneakers, I'm like, you buy shoes? Yeah. But uh, yeah, sneaker heads are crazy, now, crazy how much those things go up in value. Yeah. Um, let's copy. Copy and paste. It went inside. Let's pull this back out. 
Now this is just, you know, you can see this trick. Um, I didn't make, make up this trick at all. I saw someone else do it. And it, it seems like a lot of people use the same trick. It will, again, not work like a totally like real shoelaces, but it will create the illusion. So we're just gonna do these strips and I'm gonna sew them. like this and then this one here let's do it like that okay so now let's just let this give it a moment to sim uh so you watched the artist that's streaming the Marvel channel. We're actually going to have uh, a guest speaker from um, Marvelous, I think not next week, but the week after that. Yeah. So she, she has a background in real clothes. So her knowledge in that is a lot more than me. <laughs> I'm just a CG artist who managed to understand something. But she can make clothing in real life. Now, I changed this to full grain leather. Um, and then what I'm going to do with this is I have a, a material here that's leather. It's going to keep the circle more firm. And it's also um, set to opacity of like zero. So it's see-through. So it, it gives us the illusion that there's a hole here. But there's actually fabric. It's just made invisible. And for these pieces, I'm going to sew them. Um, I'm going to crisscross this. So this is going to crisscross to this one here. And again, they're, they're going to be not very accurate, but I just fixed that when I retopoed it. And I will probably get confused of where to sew a little bit. So I'm probably going to undo a couple of times. Make sure you save before. I did. Getting all my... Lauren Switches says, backwards. this is such a simple and straightforward way to make shoelaces. I would have never thought to go about it that way. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And again, I did not invent this technique. And Josh Purple says, thanks, but he's got to go. OK, this one here, let's just sew. Um, so I don't need this many. I'm just going to get rid of one. And then for this one down here, this will sew to this piece that I can't click on. Okay. Now, what's um, not really working is the in and out. I don't actually care how this behaves. A lot of people I notice that they keep fiddling with it, but it's going to pop in and out the whole time. Um, for me, what this does is I can get rid of my pins. And now I can see the shoe crinkling and, and doing what it's supposed to do naturally. And at this point, if I want to adjust the shape, I can. But I'm fine with it being um, like having these folds because I think, you know, this is a cloth world. And this is how it is. Let me just save. Um, so I like the look of it looking soft. Now, this is basically the complete block out. As far as how the next, well, I'll probably actually be able to finish this. Um, the next step is to make it look pretty. Now, I don't even bother making these thick or anything like that uh, because this is, you know, pretty easy just for anyone to model, right? Um, like even if you're a beginner, you can... You can do this in Maya or Blender or any any program um, or in ZBrush. So these are just good placeholders for me. Um, the rest of it, I want to look prettier. Wait, how come I'm not seeing anything update? Is it frozen? Yeah, it's frozen. I could see it on the... I see it on my end. Why don't you try sharing 
your screen and then I'll refresh. I'll stop and, and then reshare. Give me one second. It's not frozen for some people. All right, if it, oh, it, there it's back, okay. okay. All right, cool. So this is the pretty stage, um, which is to get it to look nicer. Um, the hardest part is, again, just to block this out. Um, in the pretty stage, what I'll do is basically using layer clones. So I'm gonna layer clone over, and you can see it gives me this duplicate piece and I'll put like um, a softer material on it, right? And it starts to give me this kind of puffiness. Um, it's not gonna be super puffy or wrinkled unless I give it more detail. And the other thing I do is I usually change the size. So my weft and my warp are my sizes. Uh, if I change it to 110 on each one, it's gonna be 10% larger, which will produce more wrinkles. So you can see it's a little bit puffier. And I can bring the particle distance down, say, to seven from now and resim it. And you can see I have like this nice volume, right? I love the word weft. Weft, yeah. I mean, those are actually the name of the fabric direction. No, I know. It's just a funny word. Yeah. I just like it. I'm going to cut off this part here. Uh, the reason being I want to control the layer clone myself. So I'm gonna layer clone also over and do the same thing. Just set it up maybe 100, oh, 196, we'll mess it up, 106. Let it settle in. Oops, it, uh, when I cut it off, um, it didn't sew. So let's do that again. When you do a layer clone, what it does is it does all the sewing for you. Um, if you just do it manually by yourself, you'll have to sew everything, the, the second piece on top by itself, which is kind of time consuming. So let's do the same here. Let's set this to seven uh, points or seven particle distance. You see I have more detail. And then here I could leave this alone if I think it looks good, and I think it looks all right. Um, I can also do a couple of things. I can try out, if I have a problem with my shape, meaning I don't feel it's firm enough, I can put a leather on it, and you can see the shape is holding up um, a little bit better. Now what happens is I lose the wrinkles, but the form of the shoe is more, um, it's less floppy. So I can just layer clone over, and on the layer clone, apply lamb, um, lamb skin, which is a leather anyway. And then this one could be size larger, like that. So I kind of get the best of both worlds. And now I have these nice crinkles. You see, those are the wrinkles that you don't get uh, feeling natural when they do it in a ZBrush. It never looks yeah. right. Unless you're like um, super good at. Yeah at that same thing here layer clone over you can see the last steps are this demo makes me realize that nike shoes are completely underpriced they should be like ten thousand dollars <laughs> why because they're so sleek it's just so much freaking work to make a shoe yeah it is and you look at a shoe and it's like a hundred bucks and you're like oh that's so expensive and it's like man let's unfreeze these And we can layer clone this one. Now, um, it could um, explode at any point because I am duplicating stuff. So save a lot. Okay, so the piping freaked out for a moment, came back. And then I can do it for this piece. And again, this is not meant to be simmed in Marvelous. It's just 
getting, um, I'm treating it like a modeling software. Uh, it will get retopled properly. I mean, I already did um, do that. The topology on this is not good. So there's time spent doing that. This one here, I made it too large. I just want it to be slightly floppier like that. Now, as far as this, um, I can unfreeze this. It might uh, do something really weird, so I'm gonna save. It might just kind of collapse. Uh, I'm gonna make this full grain leather, which is the firmest one. Yeah, and it's okay, it's softened up a little bit. And again, um, I think if you're doing regular shoe, you probably don't wanna make the sole I mean, you could have it as a, a block out point to help um, make your shoes, but maybe, you know, just replace that later with something that's not all round and cloth looking. It works for our world uh, because they're all made out of cloth. All our characters are cloth people. Um, so we get something like this. Now I could kind of plus up on the detail around here. What I'm gonna do is select this offset internal line and I'm gonna create a couple lines. So maybe something like this. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll crease this. And then that could fold it in like that. Say damn looks pretty good now. Yeah, it does look great. Um, this is too strong. It goes from looking like this floppy mess to looking like real shoes right at the ends. Yes. Uh, this fold is not working out. It worked out my other one. Maybe it's too strong. I think strong. like when Chatty was saying, can't you just do this stuff in uh, Maya? Is when it was looking pretty messed. <laughs> it was looking well, like a mess. The thing is, like the last stage is not that hard, um, but it's an easy stage to really miss. Yeah, but it's the it's the stage that really puts it together. Yes, um, a lot of students will, in my experience, when I'm helping students. Okay, so you can see how that just collapsed <laughs> back here. Um, I can strengthen it. I don't know if that's going to do it. That's fine. Um, what would I do here? You can just move it around ZBrush and Maya. Or it just isn't like these. There we are. Um, a lot of people get to the blocking stage, which is the hardest part, and they can't get it to look good. At least in, when I'm helping students, that's what I notice is their problem. Uh, and you can just see that for me, when you know a couple of tricks, it just comes in uh, in the last few moments. And that is the shoe. I mean, that's not so bad. I started this from the beginning. Yes, yeah, so think about it. While you were well, I started at, like, and everything, it's basically an hour and a half. Not even. I started at 1.15. Yeah. It's like 2.36. So an hour yeah. hour 15 minutes yeah. and now i have my shoe the long part was um retopologizing it because it just takes a little bit of time you can see the final one and i fixed the shoelace right but you know gave me a good block in for that can you put the clothing in on him like just so we could see him as a whole yeah even if it takes a, a bit it'll take, it'll take a moment that's fine let me just open the file <sighs> this guy's missing his um He's missing all kinds of stuff he didn't have his hair so let's just assemble him as one of your students i can attest to struggling in marvelous designer with the block out lol oh <laughs> captured by lauren okay i thought it might be you lauren but i wasn't sure uh because i'm sure there's other people named lauren Um, 
it's just like UVing. That's how I, I see it. You know, when you first UV, it could be kind of hard. Um, the very first time you've ever done it. And then the hard part is usually what I notice is like figuring out where to cut your seams. So it's sort of the same that you're trying to understand your shape. Right. So once you get that down a little bit more, you, you'll just get better. Let's drop in here. Now the cloth will look soft. Um, in the texturing stage is where I bring back the creases and stuff, um, which, you know, was what happened with the previous character. It just looked like um, kind of blobby. Let's see, rotate him around. Uh, I got to put his other parts in. I think they might be a little bit lower now. Uh, and he has little teeth. Uh, and they're like really somewhere else. <laughs> but his teeth are important. Super important. And then his glove. Oh, I don't have the glove done yet. That's not a sign to apologize. Um, but I might be able to bring in the block in. So this guy's called Mayo. He is, what is Mayo? He's a weird guy. Yeah. Well, he's, you know, he's like a. He's special. Well, he's like anyone that's slightly different. Like me, <laughs> okay. You know, when um, I first started going down the career path of CG, yeah, it, it. it was just not a path that people really thought was available. Um, now it's like something that is more respectable and people can take seriously. But back then, for me, it was like, you know, trying to explain it to my parents, like, what is that? <laughs> so, what does that even mean? So here's Mayo. Let's see. And his uh, gloves are not finished. You can see they're still like this. Yeah, uh, but show, it should get to this level. Show the gloves for a second. Yeah, he'll only have one glove. Yeah. Cool kids only have one glove. Not cool <laughs> kids have two gloves. So he only has one. Yeah. Um, and his eyes are going to move like a like a gecko, so they'll move independently um, of each other. So, yeah, well, th there's no sphere in here yet, but there should be an eyeball in here. Um, and how do chameleon eyes, like... How do they open? Like that's a, kind of the idea. Um, They'll be bigger, but that's the idea, yeah. I don't know if there's a GIF. I mean, for lack of better words, it's their butthole eyes. <laughs> They're sort of, well, yeah, like, look at how these two eyes are super <laughs> independent. But that's the idea behind his eyes. Um, as far as how his mouth moves, I think that's something we're going to explore. Someone just asked, um, when you layer cloned, what did it do? Did it just copy the top over the old layer and stitch both together? Yes. 
um, that's all it does. It does all the stitching for you. So if I just go, let's just do a new scene. Let's delete him. And I'll just make a piece. Just, let's just drop that on the floor. Um, what it's really convenient is it does all the complex stitching. So if you do something like, let's say I make something like this. I put this line. Let's just move it here. Control C, tap. I can duplicate it across like this. And let's ex extend trim to pattern outline. Right. Um, and I could do a reverse section. And this is why it's going to take a second, but this is why it's it's handy. Let's do the same. Uh, it didn't record the spaces. So the sizing won't be even. That's okay. Okay, so let's say I have something like that. Mm, hold on, let me just adjust this. Okay. Now, if I layer clone, I don't see the... Like this. Let's make this a little bit darker it's super bright and I'll make this piece a little bit larger this is 10 percent larger you can see how it's stitched together all the red lines all the internal lines so that's a huge advantage of um, the layer clone like it just will automatically stitch it for you if you like let's say I copy this and let's paste it here I'll just let this um, drop. If I just copy it and paste it, um, it will not stitch it together for me. I would have to stitch every single one. So if I only stitch these here together, I will have these lines, but they don't really do much. Then you have to go do every single line. Yeah, that's a, that sucks. A nightmare. Yeah. So, yeah. What what country do you live in, Chatty? Is that how you did? The, and then Lauren asks, "Is that how you did the quilt on cot?" Yes. The quilting on cot. He doesn't. A lot of us textured in. Like if you, you have some, you have some real quilting in there now. I do, but this is what his model looked like, right? And then the quilting was done texturally. So you see, it's like just really kind of flat. Um, there's a lot of quilting here. Yeah, it's it's reinforced texturally. Morocco. Well, just hang in on there. My parents, my mom, for a long time. Like up until like just three years ago, she kept asking if I was going to change my career. <laughs> she kept asking if she wanted to, she should get a real job. <laughs> yeah. She, wasn't she telling you to go work at the nail salon? Yeah. Yeah. My my mom thinks that it's better for me to work as a, and there's nothing wrong with that. You want to work in the beauty industry. I'm like, that doesn't suit me. Yeah, but it was just funny that she she, she kept talking to you as if you were a total failure. Yeah. She kept asking me if I was going to go back to school up until like maybe five years ago. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm doing this. And she, <laughs> right? That's funny. So, you know, that's okay. I have a community here. So anyway, that's it for, for this. So I don't know if there's any other questions, but um, my next task is just to finish the glove. Um, the hair and well to finish retopoing him because he's just caught topology i could renew some of it but not the face um i'll merge the ears in with his head 
and then the hair, uh, which wouldn't really take that long, but we'll probably be focusing on just finaling the script. That way, Miguel is, uh, you know, free. I and can then go to 3D land finally. Yeah, and we'll move much faster once he's there. Yeah, the thing is, if we rush the script part, we're kind of screwed. Not worth it. Yeah, because you just have like something you don't really feel good about. Yeah. You know, like then you put all this time and then, you know, what a lot of CG artists or people with CG backgrounds like Miguel and I um, get a lot of crap for is they, if you're trying to make a short, it's really hard. And then um, the comment that bothers me the most is like, oh, these guys only are only visualists. They have no idea, you know, how to do stories or, oh, these are just VFX people. And it's kind of like it, you know, I think for anyone to try to make a story, it's hard no matter what their background is. Most people um, can't just be a filmmaker full time because there's very few people who are able to do that. So you could be coming from a background that's anything else and somehow that's better. And then if you come from CG, it's like a crime <laughs> that you're trying to tell a story. Yeah. Um, and so I think uh, we'll, we get those comments a lot and it's like, it's, we haven't been getting them a lot. Actually, what we've been getting a lot recently since the Voice in the Hollow, the ones that I that are the criticism, is we're getting a lot of religious people getting completely offended by uh, yeah. the Voice in the Hollow and just saying that we're going to burn in hell. Yeah, we get some paraphrasing, mean, but more or less. Well, we get some mean comments. Yeah, some mean comments. We got so. some comments this week how we sh we're we're woke because the girls are black and hunters basically uh what else did we get that how dare we have a story with the devil without jesus in it yeah uh, that, <laughs> that one was good I well the one it. with the woke one is like it, it was super sexist they said that women should be should stay home and be protected <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it was like eh, okay anyway yeah, it's crazy stuff that's the new kind. And I actually see those comments as a, as a compliment. They don't realize it's a compliment. But the fact that they feel so strongly about the fact that we killed these characters in some cases. It's like, hey, dude, you know these aren't real, right? Like, no one died. <laughs> yeah. So. You know. Um, let's see. A couple comments. Uh, so relatable. My parents still have no idea they would do. I think it's hard for the average person. Definitely. No, they have seen the Ninja. All our all our stories have a Faustian bargain to them, so that's why they say the whole devil thing. Because we like the Faustian deal stories. Uh, the Ninja and the Voice of the Hollow is had the vo the Ninja gone full feature. It's kind of the same idea, you know. Like you have the the, the old man is the Faustian guy. You're going underground to meet with this guy in a hole. They're kind of the same. Yeah, uh, and the and the reason why we relate to that is not because um because we're evil. No, it's not because like you want to tell a devil's story. Like to me, when I heard like let's say the devil's chosen honor or even the Robert Johnson story, it's about how um I don't know if you want to say what No, but basically what it what it is is whenever someone is a really, really good at any skill, and this is why it was always associated with violins in particular is because violin is one of the hardest instruments to play that whenever someone was a virtuoso at that instrument they could never say hey this person was great because he busted his ass they immediately would say he sold his soul to the devil right so there's always been this um the the faustian deals have always been connected with with art Right. And in a way to become good, you are throw, you are making a, a deal with the fact that you're kind of throwing your life away to get good at this. It's kind of like you're you're selling your soul. You're selling your life. Yeah, you are selling your life because at this art instead of like going out, having fun, you're sitting at home working on your craft. Yeah, there um, is no devil. The devil is the art. Yeah. In a way. And yeah. that's why that's why. Um, Miguel and I gravitate towards that. We unintentionally, I always said, I'm not going to live like a, I'm going to do art. I'm going to live like a commercial artist and I'm not going to live like a starving artist. Um, I'm just going to do commercial work. And then ultimately 
we we are not doing <laughs> doing the struggling artists. We are doing the struggling artists because we want to tell our stories and do our own things because I don't know why. Just that's just how it is. That's because Tran just supports my stupid ideas. Um yeah, I do support Miguel. <laughs> so, yeah. But I don't think his ideas are stupid. I just think it's a little it's a little crazy. Yeah. But it's like wanting to be so good at something so bad. And that's how we that's why we relate to it. Like what would you do just to be, you know, just think about it. Most of you guys in this channel are are probably all artists. That's what I would assume. Like, what would you do to be the best at whatever it is that you want to do? You know, some people would sell their souls, right? So yeah. that's why we do those stories. It's not because we actually want like a, I mean, for me, I, I don't want like a double. I don't believe in that that stuff really it's just the relation to wanting something so bad yeah and that's the thing like it's funny that you say this like when people say oh you're so talented it's like in, in a way when someone says you're so talented it's almost an insult and in without them realizing it because it's like oh my god you're so gifted like uh i'm not gifted i didn't do anything on saturday i stayed home figuring <laughs> out how to get this <laughs> stupid thing to freaking render yeah it's just it just comes down to like just just trying um you know so that's that's what it is yeah and and then if, if those people would hear or understand if they're probably not artists that's why they're saying that so yeah. i think if you do some kind of art you relate relate to that because you're trying to work so hard to do it um there's one question here that popped up later i see things does it automatically flip the normals or you have to do it yourself so like you don't necessarily have to uh do it, but the motivation for flipping the normals, um, let's say I select this piece, right click, flip normal. Why I, would I want to do it is um, if I wanted to add air. So let's say they're both 100 here, and let's say this is 10, um, and then there's pressure. So pressure goes in the direction of the normal. And if you have two pieces, and you can see how that puffs up, right? Um, if I flip this normal back, it's probably going to fly up like a balloon. See? So because, and, and the reason why I did that is because the pressure goes in the direction of the normal. Um, so that's the incentive there. I usually don't, well, what I flip, yeah, I usually do flip my normals. But particularly if you want the pressure to work uh, correctly. Look how nice that looks. That would take so long to do and feel that good in inside of a Z brush, especially when you get the little wrinkles and everything. Yeah, um, that's why. You know, it's basically I just invested. What I've done is I invested my time into getting better at the software so that it's easier. Like if you learn Z brush, it's the same thing. You have to invest time to learn. That software a modular kit i mean we we had a modular kit for voice in the hollow everything was modular on that yeah it was super modular um much more like more like game centric more modular than what we normally work with um i think we're gonna do that for this too yeah we just haven't gotten to them we just haven't got to the environment the yet. whole environment has to be made out of fabric yeah and, it, and we can't just customize everything. We'll, we'll never get it done. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. that is it. We have like three minutes left. Yeah, that's um, it. Does thanks anybody for, have any questions? Yeah. Now's the time. If not, you could follow us here. I will finish the script this week, and I will be on 3D next week, I, I swear. Um, yeah. So you can follow us on Instagram. That's where we post some stuff. Um, do, 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 do. What else, Tran? No. We should have, um, I think next week we're going to have uh, Dominic coming in to talk about the rig for COT. So I need to confirm that because he's moving along. And then the week after that, um, Marvelous Designer. Yeah, a real one. <laughs> <laughs> marvelous designer from oh, marvelous designer yeah marvelous designer from marvelous designer that uh knows how to make clothes in real life and knows the program more than i do
right? Yeah. So we'll have a super expert in. Yeah. Um, and thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys picked up something from the shoe demo. So, um, and then we will be back next week. Uh, yeah, that's great. So, all right, guys. So, thank you so much. And let's see if there's any. Oh, well, you have one last question. Uh, uh, Miguel, are you planning to on sharing your process? One hundred percent. But. Like we said earlier, I just don't feel neither one of us feel that confident yeah. uh, in it <laughs> until we're done. And then we're like, OK, we'll show it uh, and we'll go through all the ones that failed um, once we're done with this. But right now. We um, yeah, I feel done. Yeah. I feel much more confident um, making mistakes in 3D live. Like I was watching this video with uh, who was it? It was Taika Waikiki talking about his process for writing. And he goes, sometimes I just turn on my laptop and I stare at the screen for eight hours and then I close it and go to sleep. That's writing. <laughs> and that's the problem with writing is that a lot of it, it's not like how we're used to working with 3D where you just muscle through it because it's all based on ideas fully, right? Um, yeah. It's not like a you're not making a product at the end and not when it's just it's like words and you're constantly <laughs> rewriting and it's like okay let's do it like this let's do it like this this and the thing is you kind of have to see it all written out to know what works and what doesn't work because everything sounds great in your mind oh yeah that's the number one thing and everything then, in, that's an idea is awesome <laughs> yeah in your mind everything sounds great and then you write and you're like oh my god that's so terrible that's why ideas are so cheap right execution is the only thing that's important we'll go into all of that stuff but yeah Okay, so we'll be back next week. Bye, everyone. Do you want to kick off? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Outro. That's it. All right, see you guys.